Hello, uh, this is uh, the regular Jenkins governance meeting. Today is uh, January 13th. Uh, we had a break uh, during uh, the New Year and Christmas holidays, but uh, now we are back. And uh, there is a number of topics uh, we have to discuss today. And just a second, I'll share my screen. Okay, do you see it? Yes. So yeah, we have a few news um, and we have uh, planning uh, for 2021, um, the mostly defining key priorities and other things. We started doing that uh, for the new year blog post, uh, but yeah, this is a good place where we can uh, discuss uh, what else we would like to see happening next year and uh, what would be uh, the priorities for the governance board. Uh, in addition, uh, yeah, for information, I dumped um, feedback we've got uh, during the elections um, about uh, what would be the priorities uh, for the board, etc. So you can take a look. Uh, this feedback has been filtered, so there is no sticker requests. Uh, but uh, yeah. in general, there is some summary, and yeah, people will mostly uh, you know, uh, expect us uh, to keep driving uh, initiatives, uh, to set up technical direction, uh, and uh, yeah, of course, uh, to keep expanding community and uh, getting more contributors involved. Okay, so let's go to news. One uh, fresh news is that today we had a security release. The security release involves uh, multiple uh, fixes in the Jenkins core, including XSS and uh, various uh, serialization error, uh, potential uh, uh, fast driver cell and um, access to files. So if you use Jenkins, please update. Uh, this is quite important. And we have uh, both LTS and weekly released. Uh, so all of the packages are available now. Um, other news is that we have FOSDOM uh, um, as usual. So this year FOSDOM will be virtual. Uh, we will have a Jenkins developer stand there. And uh, at the CICD room, uh, we will have a talk uh, by Victor Martinez um, about uh, uh, Jenkins. And probably there will be more talks uh, at the conference. So please check agenda. And uh, uh, yeah. uh, if you are interested to participate, uh, just stop by at the uh, Jenkins booth. It will happen on the weekend, and we will definitely have someone available. Okay. Any other news updates um, anyone uh, would like to share? No, just a reminder, we'll be using advocacy and outreach to, to encourage people to assist us with the Jenkins developer stand. And we're going to send some directed emails to specific individuals asking if they'd be willing to help us. Mm -hmm. I gave a list of possible of some suggestions to Alyssa Tong, and she said she was going to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, speaking of that, uh, there is a message in, in the developer mailing list about the budgeting, if I recall correctly. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe an advocacy and outreach. Yeah, it's advocacy and outreach mailing list, mm -hmm. I believe. So if anyone uh, has ideas about uh, what could be sponsored in terms of events, etc., uh, please uh, bring it up in this thread. Yeah, we have uh, some Jenkins project money, but uh, well, this is willing to sponsor uh, community marketing activities, and yeah, this is a great opportunity. So, win-win for everyone. Once we're completed with Bosdom, I had a chat with Alyssa to start uh, seeing about scale. I believe scale mm -hmm. will be uh, virtual this year as well. Oh, yeah. see, and I haven't seen any mention of scale on their site. So that I am I am interested in that, Marky. Thanks very much for doing it. I will make sure everybody is in the loop on that. But yeah, if scale happens, it's great. Okay. 
Okay, any other news? Yeah, so it was a Christmas break. Okay, and then 7.21. Uh, so we, we have a few topics. Um, in the message about the governance meeting, I wanted to specifically uh, talk about the uh, contributor onboarding and security. Uh, but yeah, this is a place where we can discuss other topics if you have anything in mind, because yeah, we still have documentation, we still have uh, um, events we need to organize and other things. So we can just uh, discuss what uh, would be the priorities and uh, let's do that. So why I put contributor onboarding to the list um, is mostly because of this uh, graph. Yeah, you discussed it a few times before, uh, but uh, yeah, this year when uh, uh, the COVID situation started, we have seen a quite significant dip in terms of uh, uh, company contributors. Um, in June, we sent a request uh, to the um, uh, Linux Foundation to verify whether this data is actual. And uh, my understanding is that yes, it's actual. So how it gets generated, uh, there is in the bottom uh, link to the file. Um, and uh, this file is basically JSON. You can download it from GitLabFS. It's quite big, but uh, yeah. I'm not showing it because it uh, inputs emails in the plain text. Uh, well, emails uh, which people share in GitHub profiles, but still uh, I want to show that on the record. Uh, yeah. So, you can uh, take a look and, uh, but yeah, I verified um, a number of Jenkins contributors and uh, yeah, basically it represents uh, the list correctly. So yeah, there are some contributors uh, listed as individual contributors, uh, but uh, yeah, I believe that uh, uh, this graph is relevant. So, yeah, the, oh, yeah. Oleg, in terms of my, my interpreting this graph, mm -hmm. so the 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 darker color that's in the back is associated with the axis on the right that's developers yes. and the lighter color is associated with the axis on the left uh, yeah it's uh, right okay contributors. okay uh, so basically if during uh, the moving character period 28 days uh, there was one contributor from the company it counts okay so and so have, uh, what yeah Compared to other projects, we have a big number of company contributors, um, but um, yeah, there was significant decline. So I tried to, to do some analysis. Um, firstly, we had less uh, hosting requests for plugins. And yeah, it's natural for companies uh, to create uh, uh, their plugins for integrations. It's not like we didn't have them at all, but yeah, uh, compared to, to the previous year, we have less of them. And uh, yeah, secondly, it's contributing patches back uh, because uh, yeah, it's one of the ways uh, how we get uh, company contributions as well. You run a Jenkins instance and uh, yeah, something breaks, you submit a small patch and uh, basically you get uh, into these statistics. So um, uh, what it means is that uh, we should definitely work on uh, improving uh, contributions and uh, seeking contributors. And of course, um, it's also related to Jenkins promotion, uh, especially for modern platforms, because uh, early adopters um, and hackers um, are the uh, common personas who contribute back. Do you think it might have anything to do with all the new CI platforms that have been added in the last year or so? Of course there's a, there's a lot of them now, right? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it's a case, um, and uh, what it means for us that we should uh, do better outreach to users and, uh, for different platforms. Um, and uh, yeah, and of course, uh, this all SaaS uh, offerings uh, now uh, the situation uh, becomes uh, more complicated in terms of uh, attracting contributors. It's not a surprise we've been discussing uh, that at uh, contributor summits before, uh, but. Yeah, we still should work in because yeah, Jenkins uh, is used uh, in so many areas and yeah, 
uh, there are so many sources of potential sources of contributions we can get because yeah uh, uh, of course many people could uh, move to SaaS and uh, to other offerings at the same time uh, many other companies uh, become more open to open source contribution so it's an uh, opportunity for us uh, to facilitate contributions Yeah, I've, I've definitely seen companies that previously were not doing any continuous integration looking towards it. So I think there is still an opportunity for us to have new people arriving, even with the increased competition from SaaS providers and others. Yeah, but it's we need to we need to actively work to onboard contributors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And here come events uh, and other activities. So again, uh, yeah, we can participate in Hacktoberfest. Hacktoberfest uh, helps here, no doubt, uh, getting individual contributors. I believe it helps less with uh, company contributions, though particular initiatives uh, could help as well. So for example, um, targeting uh, custom platforms um, is one of the areas which we discussed before multiple times and yeah i think you should do be doing that i got kicked out of my uh, zoom account mm -hmm. okay so yeah i think it's uh, one of the priorities uh, for the next year and yeah it's not like uh, anything green it's uh, what we need to do and uh, yeah, that's why we have links coming on board. So we have opportunities to focus on that. I think it's, uh, I think the Corona problematic is, for instance, in Germany, nobody has really time for anything for his free time. So uh, in my spare time, I need to care for the children more. So maybe this is also a problem. Yep. I don't know if others are also have the same problems. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely this uh, a thing. Mm -hmm. So just when I look at my contributions, my uh, I had a I think three months no release of my plugins because I need to make this and that and then care for the children and mm -hmm. so I I think we need to wait a little bit longer to say that everybody is leaving Jenkins. No, I don't say so at all. <laughs> No, it's it's proportional. It looks like the number of individual compute contributors is going way up while companies are going down. So it's mm -hmm. companies are not helping out. It's not that, uh, yeah, not even not helping out. That's the wrong word. Yeah. Well, uh, any contributor has full freedom uh, to do. But uh, yeah, what it means so that, for example, you're a student on the lockdown, uh, then you can go participate. Uh, October yeah. first, cool. Uh, but yeah. So. But, the, but that is a good observation that the, mm -hmm. the, the, what looks like the average number of individual contributors is roughly the same from 2019 to 2020. Yeah. So but there is, a, there is an observable difference between contributing companies. So mm -hmm. do we need to consider a way to reach out to companies to encourage them to motivate their, I don't know how we do that even, but I, I think Oleg, I think that was part of your point was that it's not, it's individual developers were, were relatively flat, but companies are the thing that's down. Huh. Yeah, so firstly, it's a stewardship for contributions because yeah, we know that for many plugins, uh, uh, basically contributions get stuck and uh, providing the timely feedback, uh, assisting with uh, getting changes in is one of the uh key opportunities uh, to onboard and retain contributors so this is one area and second area again uh, focusing um, on uh, cases which are important uh, for bigger contributors so for example yeah finally making uh, official arm support in docker images etc so these are cases where we could uh, make a significant difference mm -hmm. Well, and, and then, oh, yep. go ahead, Marky. One question that I do have is with the list of, are we going to create a list of action items for 2021? Uh, I think we can uh, just uh, dump it here in the meeting notes. Okay. About uh, what we could do. 
because I have some ideas uh, in regards to corporate outreach, uh, because we've seen this, you know, in other open source projects, and and I've seen sort of ways they have worked on that, uh, that I think I could apply here as well. Yep, yeah, just do it. Can I, can, I, can I just have a link to the notes? I can't find them. Yeah. I'll get them to you, get you the link separately, <laughs> Olivia. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Anyway, you should uh, keep doing uh, all the things. So, uh, but the uh, company contributors are important. Uh, at some point, uh, we had a discussion at the the uh, World Contributor Summit. Uh, how do we retain uh, increase company contributions? I can also pull the meeting notes. Uh, but yeah, I think we should dedicate more time to that. And do you do you have already an idea how to proceed on that that topic? Because something that we did in the past was to identify mm -hmm. um, key areas that third company want to promote and maybe trying to find a way to promote those areas. So for instance, I know that um, Red Hat is interested with the Jenkins uh, Kubernetes operator and um, the second company, I can't remember the name as well. So maybe it is the kind of initiatives where we can help. Yeah, uh, that's one of opportunities. So cloud of Jenkins is an area where everyone is interested. Uh, platforms are there, there. Um, cloud cloud providers yeah. cloud providers as well sorry for the interrupt yeah that's fine we can we can also fix the um, the blog sharing thing because right now I realized I haven't been reading the blog because we're no longer posting to Twitter I realized that like early last year but at least then it would encourage people to post because then they can get a bit of traffic it's a manual process. Uh, yeah. Well, I've been spending significant time over past year to, well, just 15 minutes on the morning to capture a few uh, tweets, etc., and schedule them for repost. Uh, but yeah, right now I don't get to that. But I mean, this is something we could also just automate, right? So every time a new mm -hmm. post goes up, shove it into LinkedIn and shove it into Twitter type thing. Yeah. And yeah, Alisa is doing a great job for Jenkins in the way. Uh, but yeah, we know that uh, there are more stories being shared. If you just uh, search for these cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything else on this topic? Again, it's uh, yeah, something for us to consider. Contribute the onboarding has been always on our list. And yeah, I think that this year is just important to keep doing things and expand. So Oleg, is this a place where is where it's okay mm -hmm. to note that I'm going to try to take the lead to convene a contributor summit either in around the FOSDEM time or in the March time, I'll start the proposal. I've got to still send out the draft proposal. Uh, I was thinking ac advocacy and outreach is the place, but just so people here are aware, I think we should do a contributor summit in the, what Northern Hemisphere we might call the spring. FOSDEM, you know, February or March, mm -hmm. that kind of time. It definitely won't be before FOSDEM and it won't be during FOSDEM. Mm -hmm. Uh, plus one for that. Plus one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you plan a contributor summit or how we used to do it before when it was rather a user summit? I was thinking contributor summit, but I'm open to input there. That's a good question. I, I hadn't thought of a user summit. I was, I was framing it more around the kind of event we did last year at after FOSDEM in Belgium, where it really was uh, developers and people who were contributing to the project. Uh, I'm open to suggestions. 
Uh, I would also be more interested for the contributor summit because the first time the booth at the first time allow us to highlight um, mm -hmm. improvements in the Jenkins project or at least things that you that we want to promote. And so mm -hmm. in terms of um, reaching to users, I think the first time would be the good place. And in this case, we are more interested about how we federate about all the different initiatives on the Jenkins community. So to me, to me, I would be definitely more interested for a small contributor summit um, mm -hmm. than a user. And also the other reason why it would be easier is because depending on the technology that we would use, um, I mean, it's easier to target a smaller audience uh, if we want to have something interactive. Yeah. So we have Zoom account, we can support breakout se sessions and other things there. Um, so yeah, up to 50 participants is what we can easily host. And yeah, adapted that uh, you will get uh, more people participating in the same time zone. Right, and, and time zone is one of the complicating factors there. So that's yep. that's a good thing to note that I, I I think it needs to be live and therefore time zone is a challenge, mm -hmm. but it's worth the challenge because we we then have more communication. And yes, I think we should use breakout rooms. I've I've liked how they've worked in other environments where I've used them, and it, mm -hmm. I've been impressed at how helpful that is to do a breakout room. But yep. but something that we also have to keep in mind is since not everybody we I mean since we are not in the same location we don't have to do the contributor summits I mean the same day we we could split right. the contributor summits on different days and say let's say on Monday we want to focus on that area and on Tuesday on this area and so on mm -hmm. and so we have smaller periods where we have to focus and maybe it will be easier for people to participate. Good, yeah, good suggestion. Yeah, I agree. So let's, let's see how we organize that. But yeah, definitely uh, two time zones. Yeah. So, Mark, do you have any dates in mind? I, I don't. I've got to start the proposal there, Oleg. So I, I don't have great dates yet. I'll, okay. I'll suggest them through a separate proposal and we'll start that conversation by email. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Also, just for, for the date, I would also not suggest to use a date close to neither FOSDEM or scale, because one of the reasons why we did that during FOSDEM or any other major event is because everybody was there at the same time. But on yeah. the other side, we already have plenty of things to do uh, for FOSDEM mm -hmm. and other major events, which means that it's maybe easier to just find a moment where it's more calm. Mm -hmm. Right. Agreed, particularly since FOSDEM, in order to participate in the stand, I'm going to be giving time Saturday and Sunday, and that'll make it make it more challenging for me to say, let's do something immediately after that. Yeah, it, I, I will probably ask for a little bit of gap time-wise between the FOSDEM event and when we do this summit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, moving on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so other, um, I think, we should uh, double down on this year is uh, Jenkins security uh, because yeah, all the recent events with solar winds, etc., there are much high expectations uh, um, uh, from uh, all components participating in software delivery cycle. Uh, there were already some questions coming about security, and, and uh, I think that uh, we should uh, facilitate this discussion in the community and to see what we could improve. Actually, there is a lot of improvements happening. For example, last year, uh, yeah, I published some stats. So there were 19 advisories, almost 200 uh, uh, fixed vulnerabilities, plus some uh, which were justly disclosed and this fixed. So it's a quite high number. And uh, there were also two improvements. So now many plugins have dependability, including automatic security scanning, uh, have GitHub HotQL, FindSight Box, and other components. So mm, still, uh, there is an open question uh, about uh, what we could do more. For example, how we deliver the components, how we help uh, maintainers, uh, how we grow security awareness uh, in terms of contributions, because uh, yeah, many common practices uh, could be 
either enforced by tools uh, or could be promoted and uh, it would improve our overall situation. So I think that uh, this is a good conversation we should have uh, over the next months so that uh, we can actually define uh, better practices and ensure that uh, uh, key components uh, are much more stable and uh, they get enough attention, not only from functional standpoint, but also from security standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wholehearted agreement there, so. Yeah, uh, there are definitely opportunities for us. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, we can uh, collaborate more. Uh, yeah, there is a security team uh, and security team is doing a great job. Um, more members uh, there could also help, um, especially getting more vendors uh, participating because right now we have basically only two vendors uh, represented uh, the security team and uh, there is a lot more. So yeah, I'm not sure what exactly they deliver in terms of security or what it's always, but uh, yeah, it's up to them. And yeah, so if there are any particular ideas what we could improve there, um, uh, I'm happy to discuss that, um, but yeah, it's uh, one of the topics I will uh, bring. Uh, I'm planning to bring up in the mailing list. I could uh, I could offer some help there. Uh, I have some insight into uh, scanning vulnerabilities, especially using GitHub Actions from a mm -hmm. previous life. This, yeah, is, this, is an area, this is an area that interests me as well. Um, I never really had the time to work on that, but I um, also have mid ideas. So mm -hmm. let's find some time. Yeah, thanks for the interest. Uh, it, yeah. It's probably worth, I know, I know I'm, I'm throwing it to other people, but it's probably worth putting up a, a blog post about this because it's one thing for the people who are already involved to get more involved but this would be a great opportunity for a lot of people who are not involved to get involved. You know, a lot, a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, new security analysts out there that are really excited for a project to get working on. And then, you know, there's lots of security companies out there that could get involved and we could get our graph to go back up. Yeah, uh, also you know, there are formal opportunities. For example, uh, last summer we uh, got um, CI badge. And what it means so that uh, now we are potentially eligible uh, to get access to tooling through core infrastructure initiative if needed. Uh, well, uh, there are tools like Sneak available there. Um, and also we can uh, probably even apply for an audit program, though audit program doesn't seem to be really active right now. And we can also continue our certification because even if uh, we have 100%, uh, um, actually we have 133% in Jenkins now, there is still 178% uh, more we could achieve. And uh, there is a lot of additional security practices which we could adopt. supposed to be github so yeah all these activities are uh, also a good opportunity for us mm -hmm. yeah so yeah this is basically our ci and, and yeah it's 100 percent but for example we can click on the golf level and for example the security section full disclaimer uh, we, uh, we haven't um, fully processed that. So uh, zero or five means that we just didn't process that actually. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, see that there are some requirements like using uh, basic cryptographic practices, which is likely okay. Here also some software delivery requirements, protection from in the middle, um, uh, some additional um, requirements like security review within uh, the last five years. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So, of course, uh, there are some items we could consider uh, for these levels. Security here. So secure development knowledge. The project must implement secure design principle where applicable. Um, yeah, multiple cryptographic algorithms. But yeah, again, uh, this hasn't been really processed. So, yeah, likely we comply with many of these items. Okay. I think we should keep this conversation and that uh, yeah, uh, we should add uh, more topics to the agenda. But yeah, my next step is to actually bring it up in the developer mailing list and uh, to start uh, coordinating with other stakeholders, specifically with the security team. Okay. Are there any other priorities for the next year we could add to the list? Nothing from me. Mm -hmm. So so the special interest groups, I don't know that they need to go on this list, but I think our special interest groups are good indications of places where we've got more work to do, platforms, documentation, uh, infrastructure. But but I don't know that we need to list those hero leg as much as just be aware that keeping our special interest groups vital and functioning is is very useful. One of the things that I would like to see this year, if possible, is uh, special interest group leads. Maybe doesn't have to be all of them, but maybe they rotate in once a month. They come to this meeting to give us a SIG update. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, well, and that's actually, that's part of the SIG charter, but I've been using write an email or write a blog post, but yeah, that good good insight, Marky. Yeah, it was a part of original job four, um, uh, update at least every six weeks. Uh, then uh, you said that uh, you would be rather doing it uh, over mailing lists or blogs, uh, but yeah, right now it's not really active. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing for 2021, and it probably won't get dealt with, but it should at least get thought about, is trying to consolidate some of the communication channels because we are spread out very, very, very thin. You know, and you know, it, it's interesting. We actually had a request this week for an infra issue on the UX mail list. You know, we have, you know, people popping into a uh, different SIG Gitter channels asking general support. You know, I think we should try to at least consolidate a little bit. You know, I kind of like the idea of maybe moving everything from mail list to discourse. So it's all in a nice one spot or, you know, formalizing saying, hey, we're dropping IRC from the official list or it doesn't really matter, but just consolidate, you know. Yeah, I can't spell that app either. It's fine. So uh, I'm totally, I totally agree with you, uh, even though is, I feel like everybody wants to use different tools. Yeah. Um, so. but, but the problem was that we let everyone use it, different tools, which means that, you know, the, so there are quote, complaints that in the, that uh, used to be able to talk to quote developers in IRC, but now you can't anymore because they're not there. And you know, that's the problem is everyone's in different spots so that nobody's in any spot. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. It's hard to, to keep up on all the different challenges and communication tools and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Perhaps it would be beneficial to put out a blog post and it just has to be a short blog post that basically is summing up, hey, the you know, the best way to communicate is through mailing list and this is what you do. You may get some people here, but you know, you may not. Maybe something just as a reminder to the community, you know, the ways to communicate. This is why Matrix is the best and everyone should use Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> uh. No? Okay. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, that's that's a great tool. Well, at least it uh, oh. causes the problem with Gitter. 
because it's not uh, well, uh, yeah it's it's definitely improved my user experience in getter so mm -hmm. so so as a as a non matrix user would you be willing gavin to do a, a demo sometime of how that works for you and what because for me i i'm definitely not using that tool and would be interested is that something you're willing to share as I terms mean, of showing us how yes but i don't think I mean, yes, in the 2020 goals thing, yes. I don't think it's really a short-term goal. Ah, okay. Because um, it's going to take a little bit of time for it to solidify a little bit. Um, I also kind of think maybe we want to look into running um, uh, Jenkins' home server. So then that might be willing to wait for as well so that, you know, you use your LDAP credentials or whatever else. And you log in and you get access to Gitter. You get access to all the chat rooms. They're all there, easily searchable. So there's a few things I think it might be worth deciding, maybe not implementing, but deciding before we do a demo. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the clarity. But I haven't pushed into them yet because it's been a busy couple of weeks. What else uh, do we still have uh, pending terminology cleanup? Um, in this situation, uh, it's significantly improved uh, over the past year, but I think that we should keep pushing that. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we are, uh, had uh, two bumps, one uh, October 1st, another one UIUX summit, but there was a lot of cleanup during this uh, time frame. Still, yeah, if you run uh, GitHub queries, you can see a lot of uh, occurrences, even in uh, user-facing things. So yeah. we need to clean up. Anything else you would like to add? Nothing for me. Yeah. I think this uh, this is basically to keep growing, so it's likely a foundation for the contributor summit. And, and yeah, there are definitely some initiatives we could facilitate now. And then, you know, I there's things I want to do to improve the plugin site, but I don't have specific plans. I do want to make sure that, you know, again, so we're spreading out. So issue tracker is my big one right now. There's plugins, some plugins using Git, some plugins using Jira. Um, I want to make, mm -hmm. it's hard for the end user, but I do want to make sure that it is clear for the end user where, where to go. Yeah. But I don't know if that needs to go in a roadmap. Well, some items could definitely go on the roadmap. Maybe just uh, keep improving the plugin site or plugin site three to zero. If you foresee any major changes, uh, at the moment, okay. we're, I think I'm good. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah. So let's see. But uh, yeah, any of these gradual improvements uh, finally help our users. So the new plugin site was really well accepted, and we should uh, push it. Yep, and we're looking at the, between Tim and I, we try to share the stats every month. So it is kind of interesting to see which plugins, it's really the big ones. I mean, Git is always at the top of the list, but it's not always the top top, but it's always in the list. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could we could we maybe start publishing those uh, via social media? You mean uh, trends? Mm -hmm. Maybe could. Maybe yeah. once a month or every other month. Well, which trend are you? For, this is just a search trend, right? I'm talking about. So Google every month sends us a uh, report to say what your top search oh, results are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the plugin stats. I mean, the plugin. Those are. I would say those are more useful to publish. I think the which plugin is getting searched for the most is probably less important. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was in. Docs. We, we we have some stats about how many time a specific plugin is download. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we could already basically everything is available through JSON. Uh, so we just have to, to 
to mm -hmm. search for every plugins and do some visualization. Yeah, it's also in here as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know you could actually get that in here. Mm. Yeah, the data is all there. It's all indexed and merged in. Oh, okay, that's awesome. I today I learned. Yeah, and if you go to the actual endpoint, the actual API endpoint, it actually has all the data as well. So slash API slash plugin slash checks. Mm. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, same endpoint. Yeah, API slash plugin slash in the uh, single singular. So plugins. Chips. Plugin. Oh, we're looking at single plugin. Yeah, so yeah. it has all the data here as well. That's awesome. I can parse that easily. Yeah. Yeah. So it also returns basically raw HTML, um, but yeah, there is some data included. Mm -hmm. And then I think the plugins. I mean, we can go over this later, Mark. But the mm -hmm. plugins endpoint has all the plugins. This one just has a specific plugin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would be beneficial to maybe once a month or or something. I'll uh, I'll get an email drafted up to send to the advocacy and outreach to get every solicit everybody's thoughts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So let's do that. It, it might be worth. Uh, from... uh, 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 I would be curious to know uh, mm -hmm. to have the visualization of what's the top ten plugins that people are looking for information. What's the top ten plugins of what people are contributing, and what's the top ten uh, plugins that people are using? Well, uh, I've been studying over the past months. The the sad mm -hmm. thing right now is if you look at the trending graph, all the API ones are the ones of the top users because every plugin. In or a bunch of them even saw them. Yep. So it's not very useful data, but um, I was thinking about it. The other way is is to know which plugins are worth contributing to, you know? It'd be nice to see which ones are haven't been updated in a while in a public list so that people can be like, oh, I want to maintain this. Mm -hmm. Agreed. But it's also difficult because some plugins are more stable than others. Yes. So it's but plugins that have plugin been plugin that's been that hasn't been touched in seven years is probably not a stability thing yeah so anyway uh, promoting uh, yes. is important uh, and yeah, we know that uh, we have a lot of plugins up for adoption yep and we can improve uh the categories and tagging support right now it's pretty uh oh yeah it doesn't work that way yeah i was like i didn't know that did that yeah, I tried to implement it at some point, but I haven't really submitted the pull request. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, there is quite a list here. So, and definitely yeah, there is a lot of opportunities for newcomer contributors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do we have anything else for today? As far as I can tell, the next meeting is in two weeks, as usual. And yeah, so uh, by this time, we can uh, start uh, the discussion about priorities on the mailing list uh, to see what would be the user feedback and uh, yeah, probably um, uh, try to visualize that so that we can uh, announce uh, priorities maybe late in February. Now, one more topic. Do we want to continue with this meeting time? Is this working okay, Gavin, for you and Marky on the West Coast and Olivier, Oleg, and Uli in, in, in Europe? I mean, it would be better if we have it later or before this time, because seven o'clock here is the time when I'm bringing kids to bed. And yeah, same, exactly okay. the same for me. Um, okay, then find another time. Maybe two hours before or two hours after would be fine for me. So just seven is a little bit hard for me because I am very open to changing the time to whatever works for everybody. I can make myself available. Mm -hmm. okay. Earlier is a little rough for me, but I'm sure we can figure something out. Um, you you uh, say uh, per, later so is rough for you, Gavin? No, earlier is rough for me. Oh, earlier is rough. Yeah, good. Okay. So, yeah. But so later would. would 
for, yeah, for me yeah. later it's easier because once everybody is sleeping um yeah. it's just easier yeah, to go back on the computer yeah. mm -hmm. this is normally my working time when the children are sleeping then i'm going i'm really working hard <laughs> so this would be better for me too okay. So Oleg, would you like me to send out a survey? I know you had done the last doodle poll. I'm happy to do this doodle poll if you'd like, or you can do it. Feel free to do that. Okay. Uh, do we want to do a do we want to do a lazy consensus that two hours later than this time is agreeable, at least with everybody here? And the doodle can still be sent out, but we could just have a lazy consensus. Yeah. Yeah, for me. Okay. I'm also later works that. very well for me. Oh, like how is two hours later for you? Is that harsh yeah, on you? Okay. No. Okay, it's so not. I love lazy consensus. I'll send a doodle poll proposing two hours later amongst a few other options. Beautiful. Thank you, Hi. Mark. Do we have a list of major donators or contributors anywhere on the website? Mm, yes, in, yes. Uh, company contributors uh, or sponsors? Uh, I guess sponsors is probably more accurate of what I'm thinking of. Mm. When so you say sponsors, are you... So, oh, go ahead. So I was just wondering, sponsors in terms of infra, sponsors in terms of everything on the organization? Mm -hmm. uh, it was something that came up on the board mailing list earlier. And I was just thinking about, you know, when people do donate, what we do for them and i was wondering if there's a list of you know like some some like if you do like a patron or something you, some people have like a little uh, icon on the bottom of their page that says these are all the donators yeah uh, so currently we have it uh, on the community bridge uh, so community okay. bridge automatically lists uh, all donors Okay, yeah, 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 okay. For example, here, sponsor and organization, Linux Foundation, the Discourse, uh, Drive Tech, uh, and Jenkins Project, it's what we self-funded from SPI. And yeah, of course, we can uh, uh, add uh, more uh, there. Also, there are individual contributors, but yeah, I wouldn't say that it's so visible on this side. Yeah, because I was thinking about, you know, like this donations is always a good way to get people to be like, you want some marketing to people who use the product, you know, having Jenkins.io slash uh, sponsors with a list of all the people that sponsor in whatever way they sponsor it could be infra could be other things, you know, and then people would be able to be like, oh, look, there are friends of Jenkins, we should give them more money because Jenkins is awesome. Well, uh, yeah, to be honest, I'm a bit concerned about that because uh, the most precious thing people can donate is their time. Yes. Uh, it's not money. Yes, and, I, uh, I agree. But, yeah, uh, maybe... but, 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 yeah, but at the same time, money means you can rent services. So, for yeah. instance, we, we mentioned this course. Uh, this course, if we don't want to maintain it by yourself, you yeah. could have the money to, to spend it there. So. Yeah. So time and people are always good, but money is also really good. It's better than nothing. Nothing is really bad. Well, nothing is an option because it's open source. Yes. Uh, it's free and available to anyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was just thinking out loud for that. So it's all good. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, definitely keep it in mind. Uh, and yep. Yeah. If you want to propose a new page, uh, just do that. Yeah. If I recall well, correctly, Olivier had an idea about uh, reworking uh, interest sponsorship so that we could have at least these more details. I open, I open a ticket, an issue on Jenkins.io, um, mm -hmm. on the GitHub issues for the Jenkins.io uh, Git repository. Um, the idea was mm -hmm. just like we have quite a lot of infrastructure sponsors and it's easier when we can say if you sponsor the projects uh, we can put your logo here and uh, in fact we have a lot of sponsors and uh, yeah i think that would be nice to to highlight mm -hmm. to highlight their contribution yeah agreed yeah it's not something i'm going to get to anytime soon but I'd like to see that as well. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah, any improvements uh, are much appreciated. Oh, I need to run because I got another meeting to go to. Yeah, we are over time. Okay. So.
So then thanks everyone. And yeah, thanks for your ideas. Uh, let's keep working. Thanks. Cheers, all. Have a good bye. rest of the day. Cheers. Bye. bye.